Okay, hello Physics 106. My name is Nate Waldron and I'm covering the topic of converging and diverging lenses. So what are converging and diverging lenses? Well, here on the left we have a converging lens and it's called converging because it has the light rays converging after it interacts with the lens. What is a diverging lens? The exact opposite where the light rays diverge from the center after they hit the lens. Another name for a converging lens is a convex lens and we have that name because of the convex shape of the object. And then a concave lens is another name for a diverging lens here on the right because it has a concave shape on both sides. Now, how do we know that light will converge and diverge? One way that I like to think about it is if these little purple light particles were a marching band. Now, marching bands always move together in a line they never move farther apart from one another. Uh, they, they stay the same distance away and they move as one unit. So if we're moving this marching band, playing their song towards the sand uh, or dirt, whatever that orange color is, then that's gonna slow them down. So as soon as that first guy at the bottom touches that uh, sand, he's gonna slow down and turn a little bit. And then the next guy above him is gonna hit it and turn and the top guy is gonna turn. And pretty soon they're going in a different direction because they have to stay in that straight line. And that's why the converging lens converges and why the diverging lens would do the exact opposite and diverge. Okay, now what is power? Well, power is the inverse of the focal point distance. So here I've drawn two lenses. We have one on the center and one just outside of it. I uh, didn't actually measure this, but I just said that this was five centimeters and that this was 25 centimeters from the center of the lens. And if we have a five centimeter focal point, that's gonna be a smaller focal point distance and the 25 will obviously be larger. So if we plug in a larger number here for F, then we're gonna get a smaller power because they're inversely related. And vice versa, if we plug in the five centimeters, a smaller focal point, we we'll get larger power. So what does this mean? Uh, just means that if the lens can focus quicker, that it's going to have a greater power. Um, this makes sense because we want to focus things quickly. Uh, sometimes we'll focus things at a distance, but oftentimes we don't have lots of space for um, experiments. And so we want to focus that light in as small of a space as possible. So we don't have to take up whole buildings for microscopes and telescopes and things like that. Anyway, let's move on to some diagrams that I have labeled here. The first one is a convex or converging lens. So you'll notice that I have the lens in the center. Our eyeball is here at the right. So we're looking through the lens from right to left at this object. So we could say that this lens is like our glasses or something like that. And then this object could be a dog or a flower uh, anything that's on the opposite side of the lens. Now, what is the image that we're looking at? In order to find that, we're going to have to draw these three green lines. Uh, these are the paths that light is taking, and the top uh, line, um, well, how do we draw them? So, first of all, we'll take the top line, and you'll start at the object, and you'll draw a parallel line to the axis, until you reach the center of the convex lens. Then you'll take a sharp detour and you'll connect that dot through the focal point and continue that on. The second one you draw is the bottom one and you do the exact opposite. You go through the focal point on the left side until you hit the center and then you draw the straight parallel line to the axis. So notice parallel line through the focal point, focal point, parallel line. Uh, makes a diamond shape. Now, the last line we draw goes straight from the object through the origin and then meets up with these other three points down here. Now, the point where all three of them meet up is called the image, the height of the image. After we have our image height, then we're also going to want to have our distance to the image. So right here, our di, distance to the image. And then here, do is our distance to the object. Notice we're measuring that distance from the center of the lens all the way out to the image and all the way out to the object. Okay, these distances here are our focal point distances, same as before when we were doing the power. 
And that should be all of the figures we need to know. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that if di is positive, it's going to be a real image. And if di is negative, it's going to be a virtual image. And just like if this were a normal graph, this would be positive and negative, positive and negative. So in this example, we do have a positive di because uh, the di is on the positive side. And so this is a real image. And if it were on the left side, it would be a virtual image. Now, the diagrams won't always be like this for the first case. For example, you could have the eye on the left side, the object on the right side, then the image would be on the left side, just flipping the entire thing around. Our next example is also a convex lens. But what I want you to notice the difference is that our object in the second example is closer than the focal point. But in the first example, the object was further away from the focal point, was further away from the center of the convex lens than the focal point. Because we have the object closer than the focal point, the way that the light behaves is a little bit different. So um, same as before, I drew the pink as our image. So I'll label this as our image. And then we know that the whole thing will be the height of the image. And then this will be the height of the object. And then this will be the distance of the object, do, um, sorry, all the way to the center. And then from the center out to here will be di. When we draw our lines for this one, they're going to be a little bit different. For the first line, uh, well, for example, we're only drawing two lines instead of three. Uh, the first one will go from the top of the object to the center of the convex lens. And then from there, we'll go down through the focal point like we did before. Remember, we went across and down through the focal point. Same thing here. Then our second one will be just like this middle line right here where we go through the origin. So we're going to go from the object through the origin. And then after we've done that, we extend those two lines out, these light green lines, until those meet up. Wherever those meet up, then the image will be at that point. Um, this would also be as if we were viewing it from the right side. So things could be flipped. But this would be if we were viewing it from the right side again. Notice how the image in this example is on the left side. Because it's on the left side, di is going to be negative. And if di is negative, we remember that that means that it's a virtual image. So if we have this second example, it's different because we have a virtual image instead of a real image. Another interesting thing is whether or not the image is positive or negative. So if the image uh, goes down like this, we're going to have a negative image. Uh, so hi would be negative. In this case, since it's going above the axis, hi would be positive. Um, now let's apply what we've learned about convex lenses to concave lenses, and then we'll hit a couple equations. So, concave lens. There's only one that we need to know for this guy. Um, so things we want to point out in the very beginning, like we did before, is uh, object is the red, image is the pink, our focal points are already labeled, and we have a concave lens. Excuse me if I said convex. So concave lens. Uh, this one will also have two green lines and... So the first line we draw from the top of the object, as always, to the center of the concave lens. And then the second line we draw, just like before, we draw through the origin. And then um, this third line is just connecting the two. It's not a third line from the object. This will connect uh, the focal point through the height of the image and go all the way through. And the point at which all of those intersect will be where we see our image. So other things to label on this are 
obviously the height of the object, the height of the image, the distance, make sure you go all the way to the center, the distance, oops, there we go, the distance of the image, and the distance of the object. Okay, now that we've gone through all the different diagrams, I want to show you a table real quick. In our book, it's table 25.3, and it shows the three types I've showed you, one, two, and three, and uh, when they're formed. So the first one is formed when the focal point is positive, and the distance to the object is greater than the focal point, and the image type will be real with a distance to the image, image as positive, and the magnification will be negative. Uh, you can read through the other ones. I'll show you uh, how that works on, uh, let's do the second one as an example. So the second one here, it shows us that uh, it's formed when F is positive and the distance to the object is greater, is less than the focal point. So in the second one, we have that the focal point is positive. Um, notice that the focal point will always be positive for convex lenses and it will always be negative for concave lenses. So since this is a convex lens, we will have a positive focal point value. Same with this one, F is gonna be positive. But for the third one where it's concave, F will be negative. So if we're working the second type, then we have a positive uh, focal point value. The distance of the object is less than the focal point. Distance of the object is less than the distance to the focal point. Okay, and it looks like I drew this a little bit wrong. The distance to the object is gonna be right here, and the distance to the focal point, the F will be right there. So we have DO is less than DF, perfect. And the image type will be virtual. Let's check that out. It looks like the image is here on the left. And if you'll remember before, if DI is negative, which means that it's on the left, like that, how I just showed you, then it's gonna be a virtual image. Last thing is the M value is greater than one. The magnification is greater than one. So how do we solve for the magnification? Well, I'll give you an example right here. Let me just clear up some space for us. Remember, F is positive for convex and negative for concave. So a problem in our book gives us the value of DO equals 7.5 centimeters. And we have a focal point of 10 centimeters. So this fits perfectly because focal point is greater than the distance to the object. And the problem asks us to solve for the magnification. Well, how can we do that? We have these two equations that are very important to remember. I'm gonna bring them down here. So the first one is one over the focal point equals one over DO plus one over DI. And then we have magnification equals the height of the image over the height of the object, which is equal to the negative distance of the image over the distance of the object. So if we're given DO and we're given the focal point, we can't do anything with the magnification yet, but we do have our DO here and our focal point here, so we can solve for DI, and then we can plug DI in here, and we have DO, which helps us solve for the magnification. So, if we have 1 over 10 centimeters equals 1 over 7.5 centimeters plus 1 over di, we can solve for di and find out that uh, di equals negative 30 centimeters. Then we can plug that negative 30 centimeters in for di up here and we solve. We'll say negative negative 30 centimeters over 7.5 centimeters. The centimeters will cancel and we get 4.00.
because the two negatives cancel out. That means that we have a positive magnification. Does this make sense? Well, if we go down to our table, uh, we show that we should have a positive magnification and it should be greater than one. And it's greater than one. So perfect. This is just one example. Um, there's lots of problems that we can work with this, but all of them work around these two equations. It's important to know those two equations and know what each of the values are that I talked about. One thing I would advise is to draw out these uh, diagrams yourself. There's only three of them, and even though it can change where you're viewing, if you draw them out uh, just with your eyeball on the right side, because that's how they normally are in the problems, uh, just draw each one of them out and see how the light rays converge on one another, then it makes it so much easier to understand where the image is going to be and how you solve for each problem. This helped me a lot when I was going through it. Um, at first, I didn't quite understand it, but after having to re-record this video so many times, I realized that it's not super difficult as long as you draw it out a couple times. Best of luck solving these problems. I hope this helps you guys. Um, didn't want to make this video too long, so I will end it there, and hope you have a great rest of your day.